What's up, everybody? This is Master In Gamer, and welcome back to the Summer Games. How are you all doing today? Ooh, ooh, it is hot out there, which is why I've introduced Operation Super Moist. That's right, folks. From now until the end of August. I will be running a very special little experiment on my streams. I will be tracking Super Chats via goals. And as we progress through various goals via Super Chats, we will raise the stream's moisture level. That's right, folks. Gotta stay hydrated in these hot, sunny times. And the only way to do that is through getting that moisture from any source possible. First up, we are starting at Moisture Level 0, which is the moisture equivalent of Junkertown Sand. Not much moisture in that, if I'm being totally honest. However, as you can see, we make $25 in... Okay, well, thank you, Tristavision, for just blowing that out of the, out of the water, no pun intended. <laughs> uh, let, let's, let's see how this actually works. Um, hopefully the, the meter will actually update. If, if it does properly update, it's probably going to wait for Kiriko to show up with the alert before it tracks it. But yeah, uh, thank you Tristavision for the $50 moist super chat. Which, uh, will more than hit the $25 level 1 moisture goal. Which will raise us to... I've got a few. I'm obviously the most precious. Yep, there it is. That rose us to moisture level Winston's Swim Trunks. So, all right. Let me go ahead and update everything here. Do, do, do. Gotta make the changes. Oh, man. I was not expecting that to go so quickly. <laughs> so, yes, we, we're currently staving off the summer heat via the moisture from Winston's Swim Trunks. And if I can just go ahead and update the little tracker here. Yes, we, we <laughs> almost 200% hit that goal. Thank you, Tristavision. <laughs> All right. Well, goal one has been hit. Let, let me bring, let me uh, go ahead and close that out because that's been taken care of. Which means next up, we have moisture level two. Let me add this to the tracker real quick, and then I will update everything. Let's see, so you, so you, so you, you surpassed the goal by twenty five dollars, <laughs> which is uh, really something right there. I wish I could find a way to better automate all this, but it's, uh, it's the most I could come up with for now. All right. <laughs> That's the next goal. <laughs> when we hit $30, we'll hit Moisture Level 2, Kiriko's Expired Suzu. Uh, actually, I forgot. Let me uh, properly format this. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Moisture level two. Kiriko's expired Suzu. Uh, and all we need is five more dollars at this point. This, this is going a lot faster than I had anticipated. Let me update the tracker as well on screen. All right, there we go. I, I, I think that's looking proper now. <laughs> Thank you, Tristavision, for that super chat. All right. <laughs> now, now, now that I've got that going, uh, how are y'all doing today? Tinte, good to see you. Good to see you. 
Izzy Jennifer, good to see you as well. I gotta figure out some sort of, like, bot to, like, properly run this whole moisture scheme. All right, well, I think we're in a good position to jump into an actual match. It is the Summer Games, after all. What good is the Summer Games if you aren't playing some Summer Games? Am I right? Actually, before we do quick play, I want to do a quick match of Winston's Beach Volleyball. Hey, Dennis Garrett, welcome to the stream. At work, listening in, that's all good. Trist Division currently building maps in Fortnite. Awesome. Yeah, let's run the junk. Wish that Doom didn't stare into the soul. Hmm. Maybe Doomfist needs to stare into your soul. Maybe there's some things that, uh... Maybe there's some things you need to consider there. Thoughts on the new Winston game mode? Missed the last stream. I actually quite enjoy it. It's a simple mode. Not a ton of replay value, but for what it is, I think it's actually pretty fun. Nah, I should have mind to get that. My bad, folks. So let me know, guys, if you uh, if there's any like lag or anything with the stream. Is apparently when I added this uh, donation tracker, that's been having some potential issues with taxing the system. So, so hopefully it won't be uh, anything too serious. Well, look at that. I don't have to even do anything, and I'm just winning. <laughs> That's Winston's Beach Volleyball for you. Is this easy mode? Question, is the crab mech edible? Mmm, anything's edible if you try hard enough. <laughs> Watch point oh age. Sus video titles are a path to the dark side. Yeah, but like they're also the path to the uh to the fun side, right? Hey, Kiriko, welcome to the stream. What did I think of the cinematic? Um, I, I assume you're talking about the second of the, uh, like, animated mini things. I thought the second one was better than the first. It certainly revealed more. And was overall just sort of more interesting. Still really short though. I'm still I still have the impression that they would have been better off just making it all one like 15 or like 18 minute long video instead of breaking it up into three parts. I think that would have uh, been better. Yes, dubious titles are the path to the moist side. But hey guys, it's summer. It's hot. We need all the moisture we can get. Even if that moisture comes from a hyper-intelligent gorilla's swim trunks. It's mine, it's mine. Oh, Alright, it's theirs, whatever. 
<laughs> I like how <laughs> Echo and Winston are just so OP in this mode that just I don't have to do anything. <laughs> I can't even do anything. They just get it for me. Oh my god, Echo is so good in this mode. Yeah, Kiriko, if you just joined, I added a moisture tracker to my stream, which tracks how much moisture we've accumulated via Super Chats. And currently, we're at moisture level one, thanks to Tristavision, which is the moisture equivalent of Winston's swim trunks. Uh, if we get only another $5 in Super Chats, we will hit moisture level two, which will be the moisture equivalent of... Kiriko's expired Suzu. So, you know. We gotta work our way up. Gotta work our way up. Find new, fresher, damper sources of moisture to stay hydrated in these trying summer times. <laughs> Winston's not an elephant. He doesn't have a trunk. Got swim trunks? Maybe. Hey, Izzy, welcome to the stream. Just in time to watch us win some beach volleyball. Whee! Yeah, flying heroes are really OP in this mode. What? <laughs> I did nothing! How did I get play of the game? How? <laughs> oh, I just stole that! That was literally the only thing I did all game. Pop quiz, how many Omnic characters are playable in Overwatch? Ooh. Uh, well, we got Zenyatta, we got Bastion, we got Orisa, and we have Ramatra. And there's also Echo, but technically Echo's not an Omnic. And unless you're counting Bob, I believe it's just the four. Unless I'm just, like, completely forgetting someone, which is possible. All right, we've had our summer volleyball fun. Now let's bring it over to some quick play. Thought Echo was an Omnic. I, I may be misremembering it, but I'm pretty sure she's never actually referred to as an Omnic in any of the official story material. Arisa also isn't an Omnic. She's at the very least, like, built from Omnic parts. So, like, even if she, even if, like, current day Arisa technically isn't an Omnic, she's like a retrofitted Omnic, basically. Yeah, Wrecking Ball's mech is just an advanced AI. It's definitely not an Omnic, specifically. Hmm. I prefer to work alone, but I suppose you will do. Hello. Yeah, Reese is a modified Omnic, basically. That's what effectively she is. To snow the unknown. The 
Yeah, the Wrecking Ball mech isn't necessarily sentient. It's just an advanced AI. It's like chat GPT version 20. Actually, now that I think about it, how good is chat GPT at translating to other languages? I never thought about trying that. Like, could I feed it an English sentence and be like, tell me what this is in Mandarin, and it'll just, like, spit out an accurate translation. Was there a miscalculation? No, oh, come on, guys. Can't fall behind now. What? No! Oh my god! <laughs> no, Zed! <laughs> oh my god! The world's most aggressive Zenyatta. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it wasn't enough that he kicked me once, he had to go in to finish me off. <laughs> Hey, El Adorable, thank you for the $10 super chat. Hope everyone ha is having a moist day. I know I am. You just pushed us up to moisture level two. I will update that after this match. But thank you so much for the $10 super chat. Did you guys hear the Kiriko alert sound when that just went off? I don't think I heard it. Ugh. What happens if we get level 15? Well, then we'll be fully hydrated to survive the summer, and from there, there might be some bonus levels, but I don't know. That's an awfully high tier. I don't know if we'll ever hit it. I saw uh, I saw Kiriko pop up on screen. I didn't hear her though. I'll check the uh, alerts. I might have accidentally muted the alerts at some point. <laughs> I don't know, Kiriko. I didn't hear you. I I, I didn't hear it. We get extra hydrated drunk Ian, gone from water to alcohol. <laughs> yes, we'll start hydrating with booze. <laughs> That's what will happen past tier 15. It's gonna be 104 there in the next couple hours, so moisture level 15 would be great. Ooh. Oh. I am sorry, my friend. He deserved to get play of the game for that. He deserved it. <laughs> I, I can't even be mad at him. <laughs> he, he, he committed to that, and it paid off. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was amazing. All right, let me see. Uh, alerts are not muted. I wonder why it, I didn't hear it. That's strange. Hmm. Well, let me take a quick moment to update the next moisture goal. So we have successfully hit, should have successfully hit. Let me see if uh, we can track properly. Yep. All right, so Wait a minute, Mike. Does it say 200%? Hmm. Well, this is my first time using this tracking widget, so uh, 
If there's some funny shenanigans in play. Okay, so we hit a collective total of 60. I, I see how it, I see how it goes. Okay, so it's it's accumulating past. I see. I see. My apologies, everyone. Again, this is my first time experimenting with this. So let me go ahead and update it to. So in five over, roughly, if I have to track the 99s every time, I guess I probably should. That show it up for everyone. Next moisture level, level three, Anna's beach towel. <laughs> Someone recognized me in that game. <laughs> I'm famous. Yeah, I've been recognized before. It's not unheard of. Alright, we are currently at Moisture Level 2. Kiriko's expired Suzu. Next up is Moisture Level 3. Anna's Beach Towel. Used beach towel, presumably. <laughs> A bumblebee soup. Do you want context? No, probably not. Oliver Ness, uh, I am running a moisture tracker to make sure we're all staying hydrated in these trying summer times. And so for all the super chats, you contribute collectively on the stream and future streams going forward as well. We will be upping the moisture level, unlocking new damper sources of moisture we can all stay hydrated. When do we get Roadhog's old healing canister? <laughs> uh, I don't want to spoil the higher levels, so I won't, I won't comment on that. What do I think of the Null Sector command ships in the sky on certain maps? Personally, it makes you excited. I agree. I think it's really exciting. I love it. It, it, it brings back old Overwatch 1 sort of like teasing trends where they would like subtly update things in the maps to tease future heroes and whatnot. Do they backtrack on God programs? Uh, maybe not necessarily. I remember there previously the term God program was considered a colloquial term. And I guess it arguably still is, even in the new Genesis series, but... I don't think they're really backtracked. I don't, at least as far as I've picked up on, I don't think they've outright retconned anything with like Anubis and all that yet. Though I do wonder if it was always intended that Anubis was the one who started the Omnic Crisis. Thoughts on the new Symmetra small rework? 
I like it. I think it's really interesting and a really cool and unique direction to take her kit. Aw, oh, dang it! I, like, blinked and didn't realize he threw that down. Did I get to test the PvE with some of the content creators? Nope. I did not get invited to Blizzard HQ. They clarified that Anubis was a specific program that caused the crisis. It might have destroyed the other god programs in the process, though. Maybe. on episode two you didn't see the stream uh, i actually didn't stream the like live premiere of the second episode because it's so short that it's like i didn't feel like there's even a point to stream it i figured i'd just talk about it later on other streams uh, i liked it i thought episode two was better in the first one but i still think it probably overall would be better if they just put all three together into a single like video they premiered I think splitting it up is just really sort of damaging people's perception of it. Mm. Anubis is just Ultron now. You preferred your head cannon where the Omniums gain sentience and can't move because they're buildings and then grows bitter. Yeah, um, I mean, I don't mind making, um, Anubis Ultron out. That seems like, okay, like, that makes sense as, like, a story direction. I, I also like the idea that Aurora inadvertently caused the crisis by bringing sentience to all the other Omnics, and in doing so, accidentally brought sentience to the Omniums. Which, yeah, as you mentioned, were just these bitter entities that were like, humans abandoned us and left us for dead. Hey, look, we can build armies. Let's just wage war on the humans. I think that would be such a more unique and interesting, like, way of explaining what happened. Like, a much more interesting sort of cause for all that, but it's a bit weird. <laughs> And I guess they probably wanted to go with something a bit safer by having like a definitive antagonist with Anubis, which is, it is what it is. Oh, not that, oh. Storm Rising was after the crisis, yes. Yeah, all, all the Archives missions from Overwatch 1 are sent after the Crisis. Things were a lot simpler when I was robbing banks with the Deadlock Gang. No! Even after all you went through. If I am called, then I do not answer. What is left, Anna? You are left, Trinehart. That is Seems like Aurora might have helped stop the crisis by sacrificing yourself to give other Omnic sentience. Yeah, that's the sense I'm getting at this point as well. Which is like, okay, makes her a bit more of a, like, outright force for good. Which, I would have preferred the nuance of her being, like, entirely neutral and just sort of accidentally triggering the crisis without really intending to, and then just it all being fallout from that, basically. I think that would have been more interesting and just a lot more to delve into in terms of the 
sort of ethics of creating a sentient being like her. And I do think they're going for the more simplistic approach of, yeah, oh, Aurora is just objectively good. Because, of course, she is. You're not allowed to have nuanced gray characters anymore. But maybe that isn't even what they're going to do. We'll have to wait for the third episode to actually see. Episode 2 is hardly better than Episode 1. It revealed a lot more that we didn't actually know ahead of time. One of the issues I had with Episode 1 was there was a lot of information we just already knew, pretty much. Just sort of repackaged into a little anime format. Having Aurora sacrifice herself to give Omnic sentience in hope of stopping the crisis gives agency to Aurora's sacrifice. Yeah. I guess that would also explain how Bastion works. Oh my god, this Ramatra! Because, like, from what we know about Bastion, he just seemed to, like, spontaneously gain sentience at some point. Well, I guess now we know it was probably Aurora that gave him sentience, like all the other Omnics. And, like, that explains why he's suddenly good now, when previously he was just a war machine, basically. Although it does beg the question of what happened to all the other Bastion units that presumably were still existing when Aurora did her thing. Aurora technically predates the Omnic Crisis. Based off of this latest episode, it looks like she was activated or born shortly before the crisis started. I should have gone Winston there. <laughs> You're guessing Aurora is the next hero? <clears throat> Alright. Who wants to tell Ashfer? <laughs> Who wants to tell them? <laughs> Yeah, Aurora's dead. <laughs> like, that's pretty hard confirmed fact at this point in the Overwatch lore. She's dead. Seen people suggest Bastion's a reincarnation of Aurora? That seems like a stretch to me. I... I... Don't think that's the case. <laughs> Why seek answers when we do not know the question? I'm curious what sort of evidence people have to support that idea. Because thinking about it, like, nothing really sticks out to me to suggest it. Other than... Bastion, the Bastion we know as a hero, seemingly is a lot different from whatever other Bastion units might still exist. Although seemingly, like, there aren't any other Bastion units. We know they're all destroyed after the war. So is it just a matter of, like, there aren't any other Bastions out there, and that's why none of them turned good other than the Bastion we know and love?
No! Don't break my poor atrophied old bones. Was there a miscalculation? Actuating the barrier. Yeah, I think Aurora could very well just be the Iris. I kind of suspect the Iris is something a bit more, though, than just Aurora Transcendent. Hmm. Slippery Doom. Hive mind style Iris. I, I don't know. <clears throat> I wonder if we'll learn anything more specifically about the Iris in episode three. Is that something I could see them leaving almost entirely mysterious? And I almost sort of hope they do. Just because I love the mystery of it. The idea of it being some like weird, like universal, like God in a sense. <laughs> Or like force of nature. It's basically gravity in a sense. Sigma needs a voice line like that. Yeah, Anna Bast or Anna one shotting Bastion is uh she used to use a real damagey sniper rifle, not a little biotic spring gun <laughs> that shoots dirty syringes at people. Oh, not the last minute swap off a of Doomfist. They're not actually gonna win now, are they? Hepatitis bullet. <laughs> oh no. 
What the heck is Kiriko's powers? Uh, don't worry about it. For Overwatch to have no real magic, sci-fi magic is okay, but magic like spirits, eh. Yeah, I I agree. That being said, I don't feel like Genji or Hanzo or Kiriko cross the line in that regard. Kiriko certainly goes the farthest, but even with her, I don't think it's <clears throat> too far. It, it, it's about as far as I think would be acceptable for it. Push it any farther, I think, is being a little, a little too magic-y, but as it is, I think it's fine. That being said, I hope they don't just, like, continue adding more and more magic heroes. I think it also helps that they're few and far between the ones that do exist, so... You headcanon the Iris Axe like a hive mind because Iggy says they can all feel when they lose the fellow Omnic. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that ends up being an element of it. Matra literally has a wand. <laughs> yeah, but it's a technology wand. It shoots nanites, not magic. As long as there is free will, I fear there will be evil. But denying free will is also evil. Quite a puzzle. No. I, I promise to take this one serious. Trick or treat. Empathy module not responding. Trick or treat. Creation <laughs> comes from within. As does fail. DPS Doom is better than tank doom. I 100 agree. 100%. <laughs> take me with you. I'm an Omnic too. I hate these smelly humans. They treat me like garbage. Kiriko's Kitsune possessed the little girl and the old man, though. Without possession, her Kitsune spirit could be explained with hard light tech. Yeah, I mean, I mean I'm not saying Kiriko isn't straight up fantasy magic, but it's 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 minor enough in its presence that I don't really mind it. It at least makes for a character with an interesting kit and abilities, so I'm fine with it. Play some football. You love Sigma's lore. How did he meet the Iris? Well, presumably he met the Iris via his black hole accident. Like, there is... There is more than a few things alluding to a connection between gravity and the Iris. Like, the fact that Zenyatta is easily the most transcendent monk we know of, uh, and he levitates without any known propulsion system in play, yeah, I don't think that's a coincidence. I think he, tra he levitates and defies gravity because of his connection to the Iris, in a sense. So there's clearly some sort of connection there. And that's why I think it's interesting to consider the Iris as like a force of nature similar to gravity. It's almost like a law of the universe that it just behaves in this sort of way. I 
gotcha. Man, I don't know. <laughs> it's been a long time since I played this well in Arisa. <laughs> I think their Ana's like lagging out. So is Sigma able to float through the Iris? Maybe not through it, but like he's certainly become exposed to it in a sense greater than what a normal human would have been. match. This is not a fair matchup. Why even Q? Would Overwatch heroes are most likely to have Rainbow Road as their favorite map in Mario Kart? That is a good question. Huh. Maybe Tracer? Because I feel like she'd like Rainbow Road in general, or Mario Kart in general. They should rework Mercy to a tank. Ballin' boys. Okay, go ahead. Ball is love, ball is life. I don't think I've heard that one before. It might be a new line. Do you guys think Hammond ever brings other hamsters back to his mech? You know, it's like, hey baby, check out my abode. It's rolling around freakazoid mech. <laughs> the Roadhogs I've been seeing lately. He's still not very good, but like, a lot of people keep trying to play him. And more power to him, but it's just kind of sad. <laughs> no!
Hammond holds a hamster as one would shake the hand of a monkey. <laughs> Lonely Island Club for Hammond Winton. <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel like... Honestly, I feel like Hammond is a bit above, a bit above sort of like those sorts of relationships with <laughs> fellow creatures. <laughs> oh my goodness. He's got his own fun adventuring going on. He ain't got time for lady hamsters. What is the term for male and female hamsters? Like, you know how there's like bulls and cows and like, uh, a so is like a female pig. What the hell is the male pig? Not a boar necessarily. I forget what the male term is, but like, you know, all animals have like a male and female term basically for the different versions. What is the male and female for a hamster? There must be a term, right? Hamster and ham pets. <laughs> what the heck? That was some weird physics right there. Cutie guy and cutie girl. Boar and sow, apparently. Is boar really just the male term? Because I thought a boar was like a distinct type of pig. Huh. This is a boar hamster. <laughs> Hammond's a boar. <laughs> How long until we get a Hammond boar skin now? Ham, like pigs, perfect sense. Ah, oh, yeah, there you go. Makes perfect sense. term gets used in general across a lot of species. Yeah, I figured it probably would be a sort of like generic male-female term. Because like hamsters aren't like distinct enough of a creature that there'd be a unique term in the way there are for like cattle. And bovines. Pig mech would be cute. Yeah! <laughs> just make it a pig, and then it just wraps in its, like, it tucks in its head and legs and just rolls around. I feel like there's definitely a design there that they could come up with. Some sort of pig-themed wrecking ball skin. Ah, oh, that faster reload is pretty nice when it comes into play. Hamsters are illegal in Hawaii. Interesting. Well, Hawaii already has issues with invasive species. Don't they have, like, rogue chickens and roosters that just, like, run around Hawaii? I feel like that's something I've heard about before. Oh, 
<laughs> you're illegal in Hawaii too. Um, what? <laughs> what does that mean? Have you committed some crime against the native people or something? <laughs> be a chicken and explore Hawaii. I don't know if I'd ever want to be a chicken under any circumstances. <laughs> Disrespectful to a certain invasive species. <laughs> yeah, in a lot of senses you could argue they are. <laughs> No, 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 no! How are chickens invasive? Because they're not, uh, native to that area. And once their populations get out of hand, they can start decimating actual native species of, like, other birds if they're, like, competing for the same food source. Or even just the food source itself, if there's, like, smaller animals they're eating, like insects and stuff. They might wipe out those populations and devastate the ecosystem. Stitch is an invasive species, too? Most definitely. You're an invasive species, Tristavision. Well, technically, humans are an invasive species in a lot of areas. That's why megafauna doesn't exist anywhere outside of Africa anymore. We spread all over the world and wiped them out. <laughs> Hamster's got to run. Hello, Professor Rock for Brains. Welcome to the stream. Ah, oh, I almost got my shields. Black-bellied European are common hamsters critically endangered. What? You're not talking about the same type of hamster that's sold at, like, pet stores, are you? You're talking about, like, a native type of hamster? Because that I could see. Some Metro is popping off. Jesus. For 10,000 damage. Whew. Yeah, I will say, once it gets into the, like, five digits, not having the comma in the numbers for things does look sort of weird. <laughs> you guys are just looking up hamster facts on a website. <laughs> I mean, there are far worse ways to spend your time. I can't critique you on that. If you're going to spend your time looking up random animals on random websites, which I'm willing to bet are like old websites from like the early 2000s, uh, hamsters are the worthy thing to look up. Comma gate. <laughs> Comma gate. Yeah, I think they already said they're going to revert it, if I remember correctly, from a Twitter post. It is sort of funny, though, that they ever did that in the first place. I 
Have you been playing much Winston Volleyball or Lucio Ball? Uh, not today. I did one volleyball match and uh, got carried hard by my teammates. I might play a bit more today. Honestly, I do enjoy Winston's Volleyball. It's not like a phenomenally great mode, but it's, it's fun enough. It, it's perhaps the first event game mode for Overwatch 2 that wasn't a letdown. <laughs> Other than... Uh, what, what's it called? Battle for Olympus. I quite enjoyed Battle for Olympus. I know a lot of people didn't like it, but I had a lot of fun with it. Battle for Olympus and Winston's Beach Volleyball, I think, might be the only new Overwatch 2 modes. Arcade modes, I should say. Uh, that didn't feel like a disappointment. Think you can keep up? The volleyball is a little slow. I think I would prefer if they maybe sped it up a bit, even if that meant increasing the move speed of heroes. But overall, I think it's still fun. You've almost completed the Tokyo map and Fortnite's a payload map. Dang, Tristivision. You just keep working on those maps. <laughs> oh, it's a shame that they'll never actually make it into the game. Or maybe someday. If they finally add a map editor, which I doubt they ever will, but maybe we can dream. Someone suggested Ram boxing. <laughs> That would actually be a really fun idea. I'd totally be down for a mode like that. It'd almost be similar to like a sumo match if it's all about pushing the other out of the ring. if I've landed a single axe swing this match yet. Not getting aggressive enough. So it doesn't help that I'm on defense. There we go. make a four court volleyball with two balls <laughs> just give it the old lucia ball remix treatment you know what where's moira tennis i feel like they could add something like that Sad how the new anniversary events are in October. Yeah, it really just doesn't feel the same. Sigma dodgeball. There's an idea.
<laughs> Junkrat ring toss. <laughs> <laughs> it's the simplest game there is. <laughs> I'd totally be down. <laughs> Just throw in his concussion mines, see if he can get him to land. There's like actually potential there for like a game mode. <laughs> Slow, Anna. What? What happened to everybody else? How did they die? I thought it was just Life Weaver. Where'd the Doom Fist come from? In before Ryan Golf. Hell yeah. That's what we need. I think they could also be Ryan Hockey as well. Catch. People running around like a slippery ice rink, <laughs> smacking a giant puck. Hey, Life Weaver tug of war. <laughs> there you go. I don't know how much like actual skill there'd be to it since it's just pulling back and forth, but. Left them on the point to deal with the ulting Genji. I shouted at them. They were fine. It was all the help they needed. So what was I going to do? Axe him? Like, maybe. Had I landed the axe, I probably could have killed him. But otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to help at all. Hammond's the ball for Ryan Golf. Well, they made him the Lucio ball that one year. I don't think they still have it. But there are the little hamster squeaking sounds the same year that he got his summer game skin, the referee one, with the soccer ball. I think that might have been just for that one year that they had those hamster voice lines in Lucio ball. Doomfist is really agile. I'll give him that. That's no way to treat your queen. the ante on some of them at least what lore am i most excited to see wrecking ball he's my favorite character and i want to see all the miscellaneous adventures he goes on that has nothing to do with the rest of the overwatch cast we did it cheer damn it cheer
Quick play feels like a sweatier comp now. Really? I don't know. I feel like quick or competitive is still pretty intense. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Somebody told me it was. All right, well, it's one of those. Hey, Trist Vision with another ten dollars super chat. Thank you so much. If I'm not mistaken, they said a while ago not every character will get more lore in PvE. They mentioned Hanzo and Wrecking Ball specifically, but plans could have changed. Yes, that was Jeff Kaplan who said that, so you know that was a very long time ago. I think it was Jeff Kaplan. It is at least when Jeff Kaplan was still around that it was said. But yes, uh, plans could have changed, potentially. Um, also, like, we don't only have to get Wrecking Ball lore via PvE. Like, he'll be featured in at least two of the upcoming short stories in the short story collection, which I'm really excited for. So we'll get something from him. For him. Be interesting to learn where the Wrecking Ball AI came from. Either it's a Space Pod AI or Hammond is a monster and shoved an Omnic into a ball. I think the idea is that Wrecking Ball, like Hammond, just made the AI on his own because that's how intelligent he is. I've got a few. I've got a few. I've got a few. I'm obviously the most precious. Wow, I got support. No, they took Kiriko. Who the hell am I supposed to play now? I can play the <laughs> World War One witch. <laughs> I don't play enough Moira these days. Want more Overwatch Lego? I know. Ah, oh, the Lego collabs with Overwatch could have been great. But then Blizzard just had to mess it all up by being a horrible company. There it goes. <sighs> Where is Jeff now? Did he go to Riot or start his own company? Uh, there have been whispers that he's working for this, like, other development company. Nothing confirmed, though. It's not a company like Riot. It's, like, a company you've probably never heard of before. But I think it's a game dev company. So, like, maybe we'll see him show up again? Also, I wouldn't rule out the possibility of him having just straight up retired. Because financially, he's probably set after having been the director for Overwatch this long. For as long as he was. But, I don't know, he might still have enough passion for games that he's gonna keep working on projects. Which, I really hope he does, because I think he'd make some cool things based off of what he did with Overwatch 1. <laughs> TikTok Moira? What? No, to start a new. <laughs> Kiriko, you don't get lunch breaks. <laughs> you don't get any breaks, Ow. You can teleport. You have no excuse to need breaks. You can just be wherever you want or need to be. Would you drink Moira's purple shake? <laughs> yeah, there's a good question. Is Moira's purple shake more or less lethal than Grimace's? <laughs> Probably less lethal, if I'm being honest. As surprising as that might sound. God, I, I am really out of practice with Moira. It has been a long time since I've played her. I used to play her a lot back in Overwatch 1. Not anymore. The real victims of Blizzard are the people who don't get Lego sets. Yeah, I'm a man-child. I want my Lego. I want my child's building toy based off of the popular video game that I adore. It's not fair. What is that city? Now, sniper! 
Oh yeah, I'll give you that. Moira's purple shake's probably more painful than Grimace's. But ultimately, I'd say it's less lethal. Suck him dry. <laughs> Down to his metal bones. Hey, Tristavision, another $5 super chat. Thank you so much. Work at McDonald's. Every time you hand someone a Grimace shake, you look them in the eyes for the last time because you know what awaits them. <laughs> yeah, shouldn't like the government have intervened at this point? to stop McDonald's from serving these. Then again, considering the government, they're probably in on it. <laughs> Maybe Grimace works for the government. <laughs> Grimace is a G-man. <laughs> Wait, he literally is a G-man. His name is Grimace. <laughs> Starts with a G. <laughs> Grimace G-Man confirmed. <laughs> he works for the government. Speaking of Lego, the sets are mad expensive nowadays. Yes, they are. Uh, I, I kind of suspected they would back in the day. Uh, I actually purchased a few additional Wrecking Ball Lego sets that I'm just sitting on and will maybe sell in 10 years when they're like $1,000. I wish I had bought more. <laughs> I'll say that. Because, like, especially when it was revealed that, you know, the whole controversy thing was basically ending ties between Lego and Blizzard. I was like, oh, yeah, these sets are going to skyrocket in price. And, yeah, they have. Not surprising. Especially when you have all the unique minifigures, like the big fig for Winston and the Hammond mini. Your barber thinks space isn't real? What do you mean, like outer space? Or like, space is like the dimensional space of reality? You miss Grimace. It's fine, though. You still see him at the front of your bed every night. <laughs> He's always there, watching. Surprisingly, the minifigures for Overwatch are really cheap. Are they? I haven't looked at the minifigures specifically. Huh. Maybe nobody wants them. Because space is taught in schools, and schools are controlled by the government, so we think space isn't real. Uh, don't they also teach you about math in school? Does that mean one plus one doesn't actually equal two? Because of the government. Sigma floats, therefore gravity debunked. Also, hello, Trash. Welcome to the stream. Forgot to welcome you back. Hope you're having a good one. Is history not real either? Yeah, okay. Well, history is... If anything's maybe not real, history is the one where it's like... It's hard to track everything that actually happened. So if, if, if there are gaps in our knowledge of things, history, unfortunately, is one where there might actually be some pretty sizable gaps, for all we know. Things like space and mathematics, that can, like, actively be proved over and over again, so...
Winston's like eleven dollars. Roadhog fourteen. Hammond four. Genji's six. Wow, I am surprised how cheap those are. We'll see what another decade or two does to those prices, though. Assuming we haven't all been consumed by a colossal AI by then. Got a bubble fuse soldier, survive! Bring me energy. Nah, that was a waste. Even the AI won't want them by then. <laughs> I love the idea of AI just being completely apathetic towards all these human things like collectible toys from our childhoods. <laughs> oh, I gotta get that He Man figure. I gotta get that Ninja Turtles Donatello. The AI is just like. <laughs> Burn them for fuel, they're trash to me. <laughs> oh my. That was a very particular use of the window there. Have I noticed a difference since the soldier buff? Not really. I don't play a lot of soldier, though. I've maybe seen him being played a little bit more often. I don't think I've played enough, though, since his buff went through to really tell, though. I'm willing to bet it'll be pretty bigly in the long run. I don't think the buff was necessary at all, but they gave it to him. Pro wrestler mythic skin for Reinhardt that replaces the hammer with a steel chair. <laughs> Mickey altered to give him different looks like Stone Cold Steve Austin, Macho Man, or Lucha Libre. <laughs> that's actually a fun idea. I, I'm not a big enough into wrestling to be like, yes, that's the mythic I want for Reinhardt, but I like the idea of it. <laughs> it's definitely a fun one. Oh, my bubble is so close. You're heading off, Trista Vision? All right, thanks for stopping by. I hope your friend's all right in the hospital. hope it's nothing too serious. But have a good one. Thanks again for the super chats. Always appreciate it. Thinking that maybe the soldier buffs are to counter the new hero? Maybe. I feel like they would have implemented those with the next season patch, though, where the new hero is actually added. I mean, it's not impossible they'd add them preemptively. But I don't know. It, it, I, I think it's too early to say one way or the other whether that is the case. Sorry, soldier, I don't have a bubble for you again. I gave it to Junkrat, stupidly.
heading off Nintendo Super Freak. Well, thank you for stopping by the stream as well. Good to see ya. Hope your bro had a nice time at prom. Cream of the crop. Macho line rises to the top. They could give him a ton of fun voice lines <laughs> if there was like a wrestler themed one like that. Mercy's shoes should be able to fall off. Ah, uh -huh. yeah. Um, I, I see where you're coming from. Can't say I agree, but uh, yeah. Mm, I don't want to hold it for junk tire. That's too much. Maybe I'll use it with soldier, but I gotta get the rhyme barrier down first. Classic forum post, yeah. <laughs> Why don't we see more of Mercy's feet? I need my feet fixed, don't you know? That's me quoting the forums. That's not Master Ian Gamer saying that. Don't clip that and take it out of context, please. Oh, gosh. Have I seen the new Spider-Verse movie yet? No, I have not. I've been asked that like a dozen times on stream before, <laughs> and I still have not seen it. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I suddenly realized no one was on the payload. <laughs> that was almost horrible. That was just a lot of captain. <laughs> uh huh. Of course, he would clip it, Kiriko. Always actively seeking my demise. Beach Torb trousers should be able to fall off. There you go. Why don't we see more demand for Torbjorn's feet, huh? Answer me that, oh intellects of the forums. Torb feet matter too. Oh, tried to bubble her. Can't bubble what ain't there. I got an old. I've been holding this way too long. That ought to do it. That might not do it. Hammond feet, though. To be fair, we see his feet a lot, so that's nothing special. Did we win? No. Is the new game mode fun? You mean the beach volleyball? I think it's fun. It's nothing outstanding, but for what it's worth, it's like a solid event game mode. Quiet, el adorable. El, el, el adorable. 
keep wanting to say El Dorado when I see your name, but it, it, this, that's not what it is. Maybe that's the intention. It's supposed to throw people for a loop. <laughs> El Adorable. That's actually like a fun name, but <laughs> now I just keep saying El Dorado. To be fair, you always thought Torb was of a short stature, but dude is four feet seven. That's pretty tall. I wouldn't say that's pretty tall, but that's certainly not as short as he seems. Like, I know someone who's shorter than four seven. They're like, I think four five. They're really short. And they're not like dwarf stature or anything like that. They're just a short person. <laughs> Your name is Eleanor, and you are adorable. <laughs> well, then I guess you picked a very fitting name. <laughs> it's a shame that it sounds and looks so much like the word El Dorado. <laughs> Eleanor is a name you don't see much. That's, Eleanor, I feel like, whenever I think of the name Eleanor, I think of, like, old people from, like, the 1920s. Oh, Eleanor, she's brought the new crumpets with the tea. Oh, we're going to have such a lovely time at bridge tonight. I don't know. Maybe you're an old granny. Maybe you're not. And I don't mean to <laughs> trash on your name like that. It's just the name that I don't see anyone under the age of, like, 70 having. But maybe you're the one exception. That's right, Trash. It's time to get moist. Bastion's all lubed up and ready to transform. I've got a long one for ya. <laughs> That's Bastion on a good day. Delivery driver tracer. Yeah, I like that idea. Last time we were talking about, uh... Pizza Delivery Kiriko as a skin. Tracer, I think, is another character that would work really well for that skin concept. Hello, uh, Shikuro Gaming 2. What's up from Malaysia? Hell yeah. Hello from America. Hope you're having a good time over there in Malaysia. Eleanor, you were born in England, so very British. <laughs> All right, fair. Fair enough. Eleanor is a very British name is the other thing. So yeah, that's not surprising. <laughs> and I'm not dissing on your name. It's just an, a sort of un, uncommon one in my experience, but... Nice name nonetheless. Bastion can transform into whatever you desire. Mm. Is a null sector map on this or ship on this map too? Really? Oh yeah, you're right. There it is. <laughs> I doubt I missed that. <laughs> Invasion is certainly commencing. Ooh. Say hi for you to the Null Sector ship. 
Man, say hi to No Sector Ship yourself. I'm busy trying to shoot the enemy and die. Abandon your team to kill me. Yes. Yes, yeah, Sojourn could use some better skins. She has some good ones. I like the 80s commando skin she has, but she could certainly use some more. Especially compared to like Kiriko and Junker Queen. It's kind of surprising how few skins she's gotten. I think Baptiste has a lot of good skins already. It's not to say he can't get more, but like, I wouldn't cite Baptiste as an example of a hero who needs better skins. You never should have come here. Funky is S tier? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, his funky skin is great. Waiting for Detective Sojourn to come back. Yeah, I wonder when we'll next see that one. We have seen the Hanzo cyberpunk skin make a return, but I think that's the only one. Bounty Hunter is definitely Baptiste's best skin. It's so good. But he's got a lot of good ones. Tropical is good. I really like the beach vibe of it. Funky is great. A lot of his sort of like special op skins even look pretty cool. Get him! <laughs> Forgotten about Briggs' big shield ult. Yeah, it it didn't quite have the impact a lot of people thought it would. It's a fine reworking of her ultimate. Doesn't really change much about her though. booped him over there. What do I think the reworks for Hombra? Hombra? <laughs> it's Hombra, the new hero. I <laughs> uh, shouldn't do that. that. People might get the wrong impression if I do a voice like that. <laughs> Sombra and Hog. Um, I honestly don't know. I'm really worried about both their reworks, though, especially Roadhog, because I used to play Roadhog a fair bit. Um... Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. I think they're going to make Roadhog more, like, team defensive. They're probably going to do something like the AoE heals allies when he uses his take a breather type thing. Which, I don't really like the idea of that. I like him being a tank by sheer, just like, his presence is so dangerous alone that he can just sort of throw himself around to force people into different positions. 
and I'm worried they're going to stray away from that. I mean, they already basically have by making his hook not a one-shot anymore. I don't know how they're going to plan to fix them, though, but I, I'm not looking forward to it. I'm not optimistic about their reworks. Uh, the Sombra rework, I have no idea what they're going to do with her. Hopefully they make her less annoying. But outside of just completely removing her hack, I don't know how they're going to do that, so... Cowboy Heat Seeking Ma uh, Mag Hinder has got to go. It hasn't been as bad as I was worried it would be. I'm honestly kind of fine with it, because it, it surprisingly, at least in my experience, doesn't really end up interrupting you as much as you would assume it does. It can certainly be annoying at times, but it's nothing compared to getting hacked or like slowed by May or something like that. Those are much worse in my opinion. Hope Mercy gets her GA reverted. Reverted to what? It's been through like a dozen different iterations. Alright, dick on Bastion, I guess. Everybody come for me. The old Mercy Guardian Angel cooldown? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have strong thoughts on Mercy, unless we're talking about her lifeguard skin. One of your friends mentioned the skin concept of Wrecking Ball being in a Pokeball with Hammond being Pikachu. Yeah, I that that's a that's a concept I've seen thrown around quite a bit. It's a great idea. It fits so well, but I don't know if Nintendo would ever do a collab like that with Blizzard. I think it's pretty unlikely, unfortunately. Need a biblically accurate Mercy skin. Biblically accurate what though? Would she be the Virgin Mary, or would she be? An accurate angel with infinite eyes. Be not afraid. <laughs> DPS again. Ah, oh, I love playing some junk rat here. You're already Mercy. Ah ha ha, I remember that meme from the good old days. No. No. Nerf Bastion. I think my favorite thing out of that whole I'm already Mercy meme was that it instilled the idea that Bastion was overpowered in an era when he objectively was garbage. So everyone was always like, yeah, Nerf Bastion, he's overpowered, when he was just actually awful. But since the the song popped off as a meme like two years after it was first released, <laughs> people casuals who don't even play Overwatch just assumed Bastion was god tier because of the meme. <laughs>
Yeah, OH, Bastion, see that's the funny thing, Bastion was overpowered when the song was first released by whoever it was that did it. But then after that happened, he was nerfed to garbage tier. And then the song popped off as a meme. So when everyone was actually singing the song and quoting it, Bastion wasn't actually overpowered anymore. But everyone thought he was because of the song. <laughs> It really goes to show the power of trendy things like that and how they just completely overshadow <laughs> the actual situation. Yeah, Junkrat does have some good voice lines. I feel like a lot of heroes in Overwatch 2, they sort of kind of ruined them by trying to go in like a more generally comedic direction. Like, I don't like how they treat Reinhardt now with his voice lines in game. I think they make him seem too, like, goofy and pathetic. But Junkrat's absolutely works. He has great voice lines in Overwatch 2. I don't know if Junkie Boy is working here. Anyone seen the new Indiana Jones? I have seen the new Indiana Jones. I talked about that a bit on my, uh, I guess it was the Dead by Daylight stream I did a week or two ago. Yeah, I, I saw it. Wasn't very good, <laughs> but I saw it. Which heroes have the best voice lines? Junkrat's got really good ones. Ramatra has really good voice lines as well. Zenyatta's are pretty good. Uh, who's another outstanding? Definitely not Kiriko. Junker Queens are pretty good. I like her personality a lot in terms of like just how chaotic and crazy she is. Ram needs more voice lines. Agreed. I could use some help here. What are my thoughts on Soldier? Uh, I guess you mean the uh, the buffs for Soldier. I think they were unnecessary. I haven't noticed him being too oppressive since he got buffed, but. They certainly seem strong, and I wouldn't be surprised if in the long run he just really ends up feeling overpowered, but we'll see. Someone mentioned earlier that they might have been preemptive buffs to help him counter the new support hero coming out. Maybe. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily the case, but it's an interesting thing to consider at the very least. Sigma does have good voice lines. I don't... Sigma kind of falls into the Reinhardt camp for me, though. Because I feel like some of his lines just make him seem, again, like a little too goofy. Like, haha, he's a weird, out-of-time man who doesn't understand where he is or what anything is. And it's like, I kind of wish they played him a bit more seriously without it just being... Haha. And I guess there's like a serious undertone to all of it when you consider that he's basically like mentally disabled in a sense. Because of his accident with the experiment, but I don't know. I don't particularly love the way they play Sigma's character through voice lines in Overwatch 2. Unless, of course, we're talking about his uh, Galactic Emperor skin. Those voice lines are just phenomenal. <laughs> Which Junker Queen personality? <laughs> I was talking about the in-game personality. Yeah, in, in in the cinematic, they introduced this, like, sympathetic angle, which I don't particularly like. I, I kind of like the idea of Junker Queen just being this absolute monstrous human being <laughs> who's, like, completely unsympathetic because she is just objectively chaotic evil. <laughs> 
but no, they had to give her the sort of like tragic backstory in the short, which I think was fine. I didn't hate it, but I kind of like the idea of her just being a unsympathetic monster of a character. We don't have enough characters like that these days. Like Sombra and Sigma's wholesome relationship. Yeah, that's a nice little touch to have something like that where we see a more sympathetic side of Sombra. That she's a bit more caring about Sigma than any of the other Talon members. Gives Sombra a bit more nuance, which is definitely nice. That didn't kill her? Ugh. This situation calls for more bombs. We need more bombs. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of being able to stop a literal god mode transcendence with a bear trap. <laughs> He's becoming a god. Oh, no, you can't move. You got a little clamp and a chain stuck to your foot. No. Heading off watch point OH. Well, it's always good to see you. Thanks for stopping by the stream. Have a good time at work. You wonder what the conspiracy is that Sombra uncovered? Uh, something Iris related. Although I do wonder what sort of like conspiracy regarding the Iris actually exists within the Overwatch universe. Or like the Omnix in on something where it's like, oh, the Iris isn't what we presented as being to the humans. Like they know something we don't. I don't know. Sigma Ramatra. Uh, I don't think I've played Ram yet today. Discover the Iris is made up. <laughs> it's all cons That's the conspiracy. The Iris is the conspiracy. <laughs> it's like some flat earth type thing. <laughs> There is an iris. Is there an eyeball? An eyelash? Well, there is. There's an eye at the very least. That was what Sombra saw on her computer. And we also see it in the uh, Shambhali icon. The icon is literally an image of transcending into an eye. Like, <laughs> it doesn't get more blatant than that. Favorite superhero movie? 
Um, hmm. The Incredibles. The first one, of course. Dang it, now I gotta walk all the way back up there. Stupid bird woman. No, not the one true pants. We need them. <laughs> Even if they were on the enemy team. It's everyone's thoughts on spamming voice lines. Uh, I think it's really annoying. But, like, honestly, I... At this point, I've played enough Overwatch that my brain just tunes it out whenever I hear it happening. I don't even notice it. But th there's some that are fun to spam. Like, Maze Mooing. I really like to spam that one. Of course, the Kiriko ones as well, just because of how infuriating they are. Doomfist is the most annoying voice lines, really? Oh, for spamming specifically? Yeah, he has some annoying spam lines. <laughs> and they say, and they say. That one can actually be pretty annoying. But, like, you gotta appreciate the meme aspect of it. Doomfist and Arisa accents are 100 out of 10, though. Lovely voice work. I do agree with that. Moo, moo, moo. <laughs> it's the best May spam line. Just nemaformed. I heard Doom's hot cocoa one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I have. It's not as common as the day say, though. Ugh. 
Ugh. Hey Joshua, good to see ya. What do I think about Winston Volleyball? I think it's pretty fun for what it is. A solid event arcade game mode. Now y'all are just spamming voice lines in my stream chat. <laughs> as bad as spamming them in game. Damn it, laugh. <laughs> now you got their diva spamming voice lines. As a Doctor Who fan, you like the exterminate voice line for Risa. Yeah, I'm not. I've never really watched Doctor Who, but I am familiar with the Daleks enough to recognize the line, and I think that's a cool line for her to have. Pathetic humans! You cannot stop Thunko the Metal Man! Favorite ult line. Ramatra's is really cool. Hmm. It's another really good one. I mean, I guess Genji's is pretty iconic. I really liked Wrecking Ball's April Fool's ultimate lines. <laughs> Collect the little balls to win a prize. <laughs> Behold, the children of Wrecking Ball. <laughs> Where 
works for me. No! Messed up my momentum. I should have rolled them. Squeaky ult of ball is definitely a fight or flight. Yeah. <laughs> You guys didn't have to contest or anything. I just sort of figured you would, but you know. Yeah, Hanzo's is also very iconic. Both Shimada's got pretty iconic ult lines. What if Hammond's ult released four mini balls? <laughs> the literal children of Wrecking Ball. I mean, we've been over this. For all we know, the mines are his children. In fact, it's even corroborated by the April Fool's line. All the little unborn hamsters with their explosive fetuses. Yes, High Noon is also quite iconic. I feel like I never hear it th anymore, though. I guess people don't play much cast these days. The children yearn for the mines. <laughs> the children are mines. <laughs> on a rampage. No war crimes for you today, soldier. You ain't gonna genocide this hamster. Mm, well, I will be killed by a frog, though. Frog, the natural predator of the hamster. Hamsters are notoriously cannibals. Yelling his children like bombs is an off-brand. That is true. That is very true. <laughs> Wrecking Ball is a rolling mowing meme machine. I'm kind of surprised they don't try to meme Wrecking Ball more. Because he has the personality of, like, an edgy 14-year-old, basically. And, like, I'm kind of surprised they don't try to do more with that. But at the same time, I'd also be a bit worried about them butchering it, so... Maybe it's best to leave him as he is. Most iconic Overwatch character? Probably either... Probably Genji. I, I think Genji's probably the single most. Tracer's certainly up there. As is Mercy and, like, Reinhardt. Exactly, Kiriko. He is 14, which is why it makes sense. Diva's pretty iconic as well. That's true. Hmm, let's may it up. Where's Mamu? Diva is the biggest audience outside the game. Yes, that is true. 
I I still don't think she's quite as iconic as Genji though. Cuz like in terms of characters you see like su subtly visually referenced in other forms of media, I feel like Genji shows up a lot more often than any other character. Just like a little like Genji icon or something as a way of signifying like oh, Genji reference. Maybe more people know who D.Va is for reasons I care not to discuss here, but that doesn't mean she's necessarily more iconic. Oh, that was a bad idea! <laughs> uh, he reversed. No, you're stuck in here with me, me. <laughs> Aha, I've walled off the bastion! You've walled off the bastion! <laughs> he murders me. Diva's the entirety of e-girl culture. God, do you think... Diva has had any sort of like substantial impact on e-girl culture like overall Like if we were to go back in time back to 2016 and everything happens the same except Diva doesn't exist How would e-girl culture look like nowadays relative between the two timelines? She probably is at least partially responsible for the current state of things I, I'd believe it. Hey, Caitlin. Good to see you. Welcome to the stream. You know, Diva from the hit game Fortnite. <laughs> oh my god. There there has to be, like, a non-negligible amount of people out there who legitimately think Diva's from Fortnite. <laughs> there has to be people out there who think that. All of them have the same chair. Yeah, that's a really good point. No. The D.Va headset. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. You see that everywhere. We have to try again. <laughs> Isn't D.Va from Fall Guys? <laughs> Holy moly, Fall Guys. Yeah, that, that certainly never took off the way people thought it was going to. It still exists as a game, though. I haven't played it in years, but, you know. Get her! I think Diva's voice line with Ash about Bob is so funny. Bob would probably blush around her mech. <laughs> is that like... That has to be the equivalent of like... At the very least, it's the equivalent of people who have special relationships with their cars. At worst, it's akin to people who have special relationships with their pets. <laughs> I don't like the implications of Bob being involved in that sort of thing. <laughs> Buffoons, divas from the hub. Oh no, <laughs> don't ever say that. I'm, I'm never quick enough with my ice block. I don't know why. Yeah, Bob's just a stoic, silent Omnic. I don't, I don't want to think of him partaking in any sort of dubious things like that. I want him to be an honest guy. 
real real women do date uh omnix in the world yeah but that's that's different because like omnix and humans are both sentient beings diva's mech isn't sentient <laughs> It's either a car or a dog. It's one of the two in that situation. And neither is good. Ooh, we almost got the reverse hook. <laughs> Road dog's on a roll. I like this. Oh, you're talking about Pilot Diva and Bob. You said mech earlier, and I thought that's what you were implying. That it would be that sort of relationship. I mean, even that's a bit sus. And I'm not a fan of it, but like... Admittedly, that is better. Diva's mech is like a body pillow for Omnix. I don't want to think about that. <laughs> would see this pink Omnic and go like, wow, what a swell gal. And then Diva pops out. <laughs> and then Bob just, Bob just immediately turned off. He's like, never mind, I'm going back to the manor. <laughs> Instantly deflated. Maze, I'm putting a rock in this one while giggling is so funny. That, that is a great one. It, it hints to a far darker side of May that I don't think we really see elsewhere. <laughs> well, we ain't got much time. I took the wrong way. What about Torb and Orisa? Hmm, Orisa's like canonically a year old, if even. <laughs> Let's not go there. She's a robot, so uh, whatever, you know. Yeah, that's right, P. Daddy. Torb is happily married. You don't need no Omnic waifu. He's got a human gal. Ingrid doesn't approve of Arisa. Oh no! <laughs> Arisa's a home wrecker. <laughs> Can't even think of Junkrat sexually. You, my friend, are simply not trying hard enough. I'll find my own path. How can you not love Junkrat's heinous shrimp posture and his gnarly teeth and his lack of limbs? Like a 
Right trash. We're still sitting there at the expired Suzu. Oh, it's a bit of moisture in that, but it's not gonna last us for long. We need Anna's beach towel to stay alive. <laughs> no. Reese's big sister, Echo Baby Sister, Bastion, middle child, full of chaos. Ha. I don't get little sister vibes off of Echo at all. Maybe big sister vibes off of Arisa? Bastion is certainly the, the chaos child. If anything, Echo feels like more motherly in a weird sense. Despite the fact that she is very ignorant and like naive of things. She's just so nurturing and like caring. It's hard to see her as like a younger character in that regard. Holy moly. A lot of aggressive doom fists today. What's up with this? What is the purpose of the moistness? Because it's summer. It's hot out. You need to stay hydrated. Got to find water anywhere you can. Even if that water comes from Winston's bathing suit, Anna's beach towel. You got to take what you can get, man. Got to stay hydrated. And for those of you who have more recently joined the stream, you can raise the moisture level via Super Chats. It's a way for me to track over the next month and a half to just sort of see how much people donate by attributing it to a moisture level. Each super chat, the moisture level goes up and unlocks new tiers of moisture. Nah, I didn't need to ult there. Get him! No, don't wear a trash. Winston's bathing suit doesn't smell that bad because he never actually gets it wet. Fun fact, gorillas are terrible swimmers. 
means Winston probably doesn't swim much, which means his trunks are probably pretty dry. Bastion's motor oil, <laughs> max moist. Uh, for all you know, there might be a Bastion cheer tier up ahead. Not every upcoming moisture level is necessarily Overwatch related, though. But there are 15 of them. And we'll see if they can all be reached by the summer's end. want to meet Iggy in game when you finish the co-op mission in season six. I wouldn't be surprised if she shows up in the uh, event mission in some form. Although I guess if they did, they would have to either get a voice actor for her, which maybe wouldn't be too hard, I guess, or make a model for her in game. And I'm skeptical they would do the latter. So you might just hear her voice. But even that would be pretty interesting. Cody and Vision, welcome to the stream. Shall wait for my team like a good little fox. I bet, Kiriko. Trash, don't ask stupid questions. There are no stupid questions, for the record. <laughs> but don't ask stupid questions. <laughs> My weeklies. Yeah, got the tanks all filled out, of course. It's all you get in flex these days. <laughs> but asking stupid questions is all I do. Yes, I definitely imagine that, like, 
if Kiriko was hanging out with like other characters and her fox was there, someone would be like, oh, like cute, cute spirit fox and be petting the kitsune and then Kiriko would just be sitting there like, I want to be pet too. <laughs> and then people would be like, shut up, Kiriko, everybody hates you. Tactical diversion. They'll be so distracted they'll never see us defending. Totally see the fox mauling someone. <laughs> I could so easily see it just attacking Junkrat for no reason. <laughs> just ripping off one of his prosthetic limbs. <laughs> This is going well. Holy mo- this hamster is something else. Can I try to play Mercy? I am awful at Mercy. She's one of my least played heroes. I will not be coerced into playing Mercy so easily. I'll stick with the heroes I enjoy. Ever thought about getting a VTuber? You mean getting a VTuber model or like kidnapping a VTuber and holding them hostage? Because uh, certainly not that. I have considered getting a like a proper 3D VTuber model for my avatar though. That's actually something I very much want to do at some point, but it's expensive and I'd have to find like a like the right artist to do it. So it's not an immediate goal of mine, but eventually I'd like to. Lowest hero play time? Uh, probably Symmetra. I'm actually not sure though, I'd have to check. Edit a Zenyatta model, that'd be a good start. If, if I was better at like 3D modeling myself, I might just like take the Zen model and just edit it a bit. <laughs> but I, I, I have very little experience with 3D modeling, so. I'd rather hire someone to do that, or commission it, at the very least. Cool man glasses on Zenyatta. <laughs> Ugh. Is a Junkrat VTuber? I wouldn't be surprised. I, I imagine someone out there would just, like, take an existing model from a game like Overwatch and just rig it to work as a VTuber and just use that. Ready. Yeah, Flora, the bigger thing is, like, rigging the model to work with, like, VTubing software. Like, from what I understand, that can be fairly difficult. 
I mean, unless I made it like a really simplistic one that only had like basic body movements. But if I wanted to have any sort of like head movement or any sort of like facial movement, especially, that would be quite a bit harder to program into it. Matches shot. I need healing. A lot of models exist for reasons we do not fully understand. Uh, I understand why a lot of them exist. I just don't like to think about it. Sending out his stupid neck pistons <laughs> would be awful to rig. Yeah. Yeah, oh my god. All, all the, the like, neck components of Omnix, that would have to be a nightmare. If I were to end up getting, like, a proper VTuber model, I might even have to make it more humanoid in a sense, just because I don't... Like, otherwise, I'd have to find an artist who, like, specializes in making robots, which maybe there are people like that out there. I don't doubt there could be, but... If, oh, there's a lot of little aspects of it that I think would be a real pain for a lot of uh, artists and animators. Yeah, I don't need the mouth to move. That's true. That's That'd be the one part that doesn't. But I would want some facial motion tracking. Probably the eyes. If you've seen my uh, Discord emojis on my server for the MIG icon, there's like the little like blue lights to signify the eyes. I'd want to do something like that so the eyes can sort of move around and like blink and do different expressions and try to convey facial expression purely through the eyes without needing to use the mouth, which that aspect of it would be simpler than most VTuber models and how those work. But there's other aspects of it with like, yeah, the pistons and stuff, which I think would be really difficult. Just zip up the collar, maybe. Just wear a turtleneck. <laughs> Put on a parka. <laughs> Like Bob's eyes? Yes, exactly, exactly. Like Bob's eyes. That's a great uh, example to use. Try drawing 2D Omnics. It's awful. <laughs> I'm not a great artist to begin with, so... Yeah, don't expect me to be good at drawing anything. Yeah, Arisa's eyes are a really cool design. It's so simple, too. It's just, like, a few, like, uh, different components that can just sort of move and rotate to simulate different facial expressions. It's so clever. I love it. I always love creative ways to convey human-esque features and emotions using, like, non-human components like that. Like, Arisa is a robot that has no mouth or anything, only eyes, and yet she can still convey emotions. Hammond is similar as well with the fact that, like, his eyes are, like, big and dark, so they're not quite as good at signifying emotion as, like, human eyes. But he has his eyebrows and, like, other aspects of his face that can sort of twitch to compensate for that, which is great. Yeah, Reese is a very creative robot design. I quite like it. What? VTuber model covered with a cardboard cutout. <laughs> Yeah, it can, it can just be like a generic, like, humanoid VTuber model, but they're wearing a cardboard box with my avatar's face on it on the front.
Yeah, great example there of Ramatra's model acting funky. <laughs> it is a weird one. Hey, Tater Tot, welcome to the stream. We're talking about VTuber models and about the potential to do an Omnic VTuber model and how difficult that would be and easy. Certain aspects of it would be easier, other aspects would be harder. Don't worry, guys, I got one. Reminds you of the film Spirit Stallion of the Cimarron. I'm not familiar with that. I don't know if I've ever heard of it. But yeah, Wally is another great example of how to convey emotions through simplistic robot designs without human features. Should have ran when you had the chance. Queen's over here wrecking shop. Ugh. My blood. I don't even have blood, but I need my blood. I'm surprised we've lasted this long. This match has felt shot from the get-go. Hanzo can hold. <laughs> Maybe I should just get a Bastion model. <laughs> no facial expressions whatsoever. I killed my brother. <laughs> Just get a blank model. <laughs> just some creepy, like, mannequin puppet thing. That'll be my new avatar. Wow, May saved the day there. Yeah, using body language to substitute facial expression 
for like faceless characters is always really cool. It's a really creative way to do something very non-conventional. So whenever it's done well, it is pretty cool. What are my thoughts on New Junk City? I think it looks pretty cool. I'm excited to get to explore it. Ramacha's staff is actually a shepherd's hook. Moses motif, I guess, but also leading sheep. Oh yeah, I, definitely that's intentional symbolism on Blizzard's part for Ramatra. The whole shepherd aspect. Oh, well. <laughs> Ram, Matra, Sheep? Might be onto something there. <laughs> us defend our homeland. Well, maybe not our homeland, but you know, our, our place of residence. Very law-abiding citizen Hammond. <laughs> Is he even officially a citizen of anywhere? <laughs> Does he pay taxes? Oh dear. I might not be able to play Wrecking Ball here, especially if I'm doing stupid rollouts like that. What the hell is that? Healing Widow and heal me. <laughs> yeah, that bastard's gonna wreck me. Uh, let's play D.Va. I don't play enough D.Va these days. Hammond is very punctual with his taxes. I mean, he's certainly fast enough. Could get him done if he wants to. Ow.
Woo, D.Va gameplay! <laughs> yeah, I guess I don't play D.Va much. I'm so low. I wanted to assassin the bastion. All junkers would commit tax evasion. I don't know if they could, because that means they wouldn't be paying taxes to the queen, and I don't think she would let that let that fly. She would uh, have some pretty severe punishments. Make the IRS look like chumps by comparison. Keep up with them. Oh my god, he got away. Or has he? Holy moly, this Hanzo. Wow. Chunker Town is a tax haven. <laughs> I don't know, not with the queen running it, I feel like. Yeah, Lucio main playing Hanzo. That's what it feels like. He's just flying all over the place. What does the queen need money for? For the simple sake of having money. I mean, have you seen this room? <laughs> what do you think she needs money for? She just wants to have it. Hey, I talk. Good to see ya. Welcome to the stream. That's right, you do have to moisturize. We're not quite at the point of uh, hydrating ourselves with bottled moisturizer just yet. We're still at the point where we're drinking Kiriko's expired Suzu. But, next up, we will we'll be drinking Anna's beach towel. So, we're working our way up the chart, you know. Not gonna lie, excited to see interactions in the season six missions. Not gonna buy them, but you'll watch them on YouTube. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of people who are going to do that. I'm curious how many people are actually going to pay for and play through them as opposed to just watching through them. What on earth is happening? <laughs> I was gonna say Kiriko's bath water. That's that's disgusting. Why would I ever say that? That's a wretched thing to drink. I'd rather die of dehydration.
Regroup, regroup. Still win this. How have the game's been going? Uh, 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 hit or miss here and there, back and forth, you know. That Hanzo's really a point. <laughs> Slippery as a frog and twice as deadly. Why? Big flashpoint maps made you realize you could have a whole MMO with sprawling maps in Overwatch 3. Uh, I mean, th theoretically, sure. I don't know if we'd want that, though. That would be quite the departure from uh, what Overwatch is and has been historically. Besides, we all know Overwatch 3 is going to be uh, 4v4. C9. <laughs> Come on, we can get this old man. Woo! There's your feet, you sick. I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> Glad they departed from that. You love MMOs, but it feels very not Overwatch. Yeah, I agree. Like, I am curious to see what an Overwatch MMO would have actually looked like, but it feels so different. Unless they had, like, some revolutionary new idea. But, like, uh, I, I think it was in the best for them to not shove Overwatch into the MMO land. I am surprised we won that match. <laughs> hey, what do I think the new hero's name is? I have no idea. Something Peruvian, most likely. Forget getting the new titles they released, 100 and 300 wins in Team Q. Oof. Well, if anyone's gonna get them, it's gonna be you, I talk. I got faith in ya. <laughs> work is never done. I ain't even gonna try, but... You should go for them. 
Winston gameplay. Hmm. I don't know. I don't enjoy playing Winston as much as other heroes. I mean, he's pretty good in a lot of situations, and I play him a decent amount, but, like, I'd rather play Ball if I can. Would you kiss Winston? Ugh. No, thank you, please. See, like, getting slowed like that isn't nearly as annoying as getting outright hacked or, like, cut off by a Maywall. It's annoying still, but I would take the cast current grenade over getting hacked any day. We don't have group features anymore, so yeah. Yeah, that's true. The, the absence of, like, the LFG with this whole... 5v5 competitive thing is like I don't know it, it, it really makes it less viable for a lot of people basically which is a shame but I guess it's mainly an experimental sort of thing they're adding which is fair I'm always down for experiments if it potentially could lead to some interesting things in the future You're heading off, Shikuro Gaming. Thank you for stopping by the stream. It's good to see you. Overwatch IP has so much potential. I know. It's such a cool IP, and they've done so little with it. And what little they have done over the past couple years has been really mundane. They're just wasting a gold mine, basically. Like, where is Hammond Racing? We need our own Mario Kart equivalent with the other hamsters from Horizon. <laughs> I really like that voice line. <laughs> My robot. Mine. <laughs> it's so, like, petty. <laughs> but it fits him so well. Winston's in the next dating simulator. Oh no. <laughs> what if the next update for Lover Watch, they just add all the animal heroes? It's Hammond and Winston and Arisa's puppy, Kiriko's fox. Riz Matra better be in the next dating sim. I, I could see him being added if they add Omnic characters. Oh, the Overwatch Lego game could have been real. I know. <laughs> it's so tragic. Beast? Um, what the heck was happening to that? Did you guys see that? What the hell? Uh oh, are the servers dying again? Are the servers dying again? Or is it just my internet? Did time freeze for everyone? Okay, it's not just me, thank God. <laughs> um, something funky's happening. My latency skyrocketed. And that Junker Queen just moonwalked through the technology museum. <laughs> oh no, please don't tell me the servers are dying again. 
What is happening? <laughs> ah! <laughs> this is weird. I don't even know how much it's showing up, but like I can feel it like subtly rubber banding constantly as I move around. What the heck? Ah! <laughs> Who got the lag switch? Oh, okay. I teleported it down into the train yard. Okay. We truly live in the bad end. <laughs> Dude, check out, check it out. <laughs> Moonwalking pushbot. I'm surprised it hasn't outright kicked us from the match yet. Go, go Tracer. Oh, some people are dropping. Maybe they just left. Whoa. Clock's still ticking down and we are in the lead. So technically we can still win. What the hell was that? Oh my god, grappling around right now feels so weird. I don't know if it's even like, if you can even tell just by watching it how weird it feels. Like he is not going where he's supposed to. Okay, well. Oh, is it fixed? Oh, my latency's back down. Maybe it's fixed. All right, guys, a, a, a brief blip in the matrix. We're all good, though. We're, we're, we're back to how it should be. Server tweaking. <laughs> Bro, I've had slideshows. This is nothing. <laughs> Alright, Lucio's just, uh, gone friendly. There's no one on the other team! <laughs> it's just Lucio. And we're down a player. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you win on New Queen Street by playing Wrecking Ball. Thank you for tuning in to my Wrecking Ball tank guide. Guaranteed to work. Hey, look at that. <laughs> We got teleported to Dorado. Is it the same people? I wasn't really paying attention to their names previously, so I don't I can't tell, but we are together again. <laughs> and they're down two people. Your mind is filled with ball knowledge. Yes, you will become peak hamster in no time. But these hot, simple tips. I mean, I'm down to see where this just sort of goes, you know?
What's up, chat? How are you all doing today? You staying hydrated? You got good moisture going for you? I'm still here sucking on this expired Suzu bottle, but hopefully you all got some good hydration of your own. Sure is a match indeed. Well said, Frog Mario. <laughs> the you just got new carpets, so you're putting everything back in your room. Nice, well hopefully the new carpets are better than the last. Otherwise, what's the point, right? All that effort of moving your desk and computer and everything not to upgrade the carpets. Enjoying my little ride here. Look at that. I told you, pro hamster. Average blizzard experience. <laughs> Will it put us in a proper match this time, or is it going to do something funky again? Alright, let's see if this one's a real match. Yeah, I like the idea that the Junkers would have assumed Wrecking Ball was an Omnic at some point, only for it to be revealed, nope, he's a hamster! <laughs> what? <laughs> What are they talking about in chat? Oh my god. How unsavory. Queen was the one who forced him to install profanity filters. I love the idea of that. Because, yeah, I guess it doesn't really make sense that Hammond would have his own filter. Like, like why, why does Hammond filter it at all? Why? Why would he? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> they thought that the Queen forced him to put them in. I love that theory. <laughs> Either that or the AI itself just sort of wisened up and was like, hmm, 
I shouldn't be repeating all these things. And then just added the filters against his will. You think the profanity filter is what implies Hammond kitbashed the AI from the space station? Possibly. That that that's an, another interesting theory. That yeah, it was just already in whatever AI he built it from. I could see that being the case as well. Heal me, frog. It's a shame none of the junkers can cuss like Aussies actually do. Yeah. Oh! No, 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 no! Come on, come on, come on! Yes! I leave. I hate getting stuck on the bot. Can't hit a stationary target, Doomfist, huh?
No, no, no! Leave me alone! New hero nerf can only hit moving targets and does no damage to stationary targets. <laughs> oh, what if they had like a passive where it's like you do more damage to like moving targets? Some weird like anti-momentum type ability. That would be interesting. Doomfist, and it's a sea of mines. There's nowhere to land. Who do you think is the most flanderized character since their launch? That is a really good question. I'm tempted to say Reinhardt. Because earlier in the stream, I was talking about how I don't like how, like, goofy they've made him in Overwatch 2. I think Reinhardt's been really heavily flanderized. Is he the most, though? Not sure. It's alright, it's alright, we got distance. We'll be fine. Yo! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Fat rat! <laughs> Please be playing the game. Please be playing the game. Please be playing the game. Yes! The crap! <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> oh man, that was awesome. Hamster gaming. I wish the dance had gotten into it, but I think it was the right choice to finish off the Junkrat and secure the play of the game. All right, guys. Well, I will be calling the stream there. Some other things I have to do in a bit, so I should probably end it on a high note with the conclusion of that. Oh, Izzy, were you spamming emotes? You're regular, you should know better than to do that. Alright, you all have a good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it might be for you. Uh, let me get the scene up. Thank you all for the super chats. We hit moisture level 2 today, and about halfway to moisture level 3. Moisture levels are cumulative over streams, so next stream we'll be picking up where we left off. And thank you everybody who tuned in, shared all your lovely comments, and I wish you all the best. Have a good whatever.